It doesn't happen. It's certainly not part of science. It's something you have to believe in. They teach the kids it all started with a big bang 20 billion years ago. A big bang. I like to ask him some simple questions. Uh, what exploded? And where did it come from? And where did the energy come from? Et cetera, et cetera. According to the Big Bang Theory, it all started with a little tiny dot and exploded. <laughs> and spread out over all the universe at much faster than the speed of light. Well, the Big Bang Theory, as we'll see in a minute, is stupid. See, I don't know of a better way to say it. I'm trying to be nice to him, but it is just stupid. The Big Bang idea th started with a Belgian astronomer named George something, can't pronounce his last name. George said that this original matter was no more than a few light years in diameter. At the very least, that would be two, or about 12 trillion miles. So they started off teaching, and a spot 12 trillion miles across was what exploded. Well, they revised that down. In 1965, they said, no, it was only 275 million miles across. Well, that's way down from 12 trillion. 1972, they said, no, it's only 71 million miles across. I don't know how they know this stuff, but this is what they taught, okay? 1974, they said it was only 54,000 miles across. 1983, they said it was the trillionth, the diameter of a proton. <laughs> now they're saying it's nothing at all. Nothing exploded. And here we are. This is what the textbooks teach. 18 to 20 billion years ago, all the matter in the universe was concentrated into one very dense, very hot region that may have been much smaller than a period on this page. That's stupid. This one says, all of the matter and energy someday will once again be packed into a small area, no bigger than the period at the end of this sentence. Then another big bang will occur. It happens every 80 to 100 billion years. So you can forget about global warming. <laughs> we're we're going to get squished. Now this textbook author was brilliant. I could not believe how smart this guy was. <clears throat> he said, boys and girls, nothing really means nothing. You have to be at least that smart to write a book. He said, not only matter and energy would disappear, but also space and time. However, physicists theorize that from this state of nothingness, the universe began in a gigantic explosion. What? <laughs> yes, boys and girls, you see, nothing exploded, and uh, here we are. Now, who, who can argue with logic like that? Man. They even put this in major science journals like Scientific American. This fellow said, uh, the observable universe, uh, that would be us, could have evolved. There's that word again. You've got to watch that one. Okay, six meanings. From an infinitesimal region. 
In the Greek, that means a uh, dot. It's then tempting to go one step further and speculate that the entire universe evolved from literally nothing. They call that science and put it in a science book. I would call that stupid and put it in the garbage. <laughs> This is what the books teach. I collect them. I've got hundreds and hundreds of these books from countries all over the world, clear back from 1890s up until the 2001 textbooks. They, they're teaching this kind of stuff, folks. This one says, all the matter in the universe was drawn into this little tiny dot, and it spun faster and faster. This is what they teach the kids. Some kid's doing this for homework tonight, right? It spun faster and faster. One day, it exploded. Big bang. I was talking to a professor from Berkeley one time. I was sitting on the airplane next to a professor from Berkeley University. I don't know if you folks here in Idaho ever heard of Berkeley or not. But uh, Berkeley is not a Bible college. So we got talking about the Big Bang, and he said he believed in the Big Bang Theory. I said, yes, sir, I figured that. You have to to teach it at Berkeley. Uh, I said, tell me, sir, how did the universe get here? He said, well, 20 billion years ago, all the matter was squished in this little tiny dot, and it was spinning real fast, and it exploded. <laughs> Big Bang. And pieces flew off and became the galaxies and the sun, the moon, the stars, and finally, you know, people. Here we are. I said, sir, could I ask you a couple questions, please? You know, one of my favorite things to do in life is asking questions to people who believe in evolution. I absolutely have a wonderful... That's how this whole ministry started. Twelve years ago, I moved to Pensacola, Florida. Some article came out in the newspaper that said, Dinosaur bones found in Montana from 80 million years ago. I wrote my first letter to the editor in my life about 12 years ago. I wrote a letter to the editor. I said, yes, they found dinosaur bones, and yes, it was 40 feet long, and yes, it was found in Montana, but it was not from 80 million years ago. This one probably drowned in the flood in the days of Noah, 4,400 years ago. And you would have thought I shot the sacred cow. Actually... I did. <laughs> Boy, there began to be quite a battle in the newspaper, letters to the editor flying back and forth, and finally... Uh